Hi everyone, so this will be an unboxing video and I'll go through all the products that I ordered. So if you don't like unboxings and uh, seeing what I bought, I should just advise you to skip uh, this video. But I think you should watch it because it's pretty cool to see um, what materials I've ordered and what I'll possibly be doing with them. So um, it's also something like right in the comments, if you see like for example here, it's the high temperature resin. I already used it in another video, but if you think like, oh, it would be cool if you could make like um, like spoons or something like that made out of pre prep just leave your suggestions down below and I'll try to keep that in mind uh, for future videos because all of these products are like mostly ordered uh, for tutorials along 2019. So um, most of these products will be used before the end of the year because I go to, through quite a lot of materials uh, during the year. So um, this is like more like a, a quick um, unboxing time lapse just to show you all the materials. Uh, I'll go through all the materials uh, later on just to give you a bit more details about why I've ordered these and why not others. So a thing like most people ask why always easy composites? It's quite easy to answer. It's because I've started I think seven years ago and I seen their um, infusion video. And so I started looking into it and then I just ordered their products just to be sure that I could do exactly the same following their tutorial. Since then I've got so used to their product that I always use them. It's more like a matter of of like the, the nature of knowing how the products work that are very, um, like uh, I'm in a relaxed state when I'm using epoxy that I know because I know exactly how it will behave. So you can also see there's a lot of glass casts. Um, so I did the resin uh, table, so the river table, uh, and I'm hooked to working with wood now and um, I'll do more tables. So I think it's about uh, 30 liters. So it's good for two or three tables. If you want me to um, make more tutorials about tables or other castings with it, just leave a comment below. I have some ideas, um, but if you want to say like, I would like a table like this with this color, just let me know. So here's a, a fun thing, like it's a new, uh, bottle, they changed it a bit, and I've seen that the catalyst of the glass cast 10 is, um, like you can use a glass cast 1050 with two different hardeners, so uh, that's something new that I didn't know before, so you can use the 10 or the 50, I suppose that the 50 will uh, react a bit slower, because it has more like uh, mass that you can uh, pour in one go. So here is the catch pot, so I've ordered a new one, uh, just so I have two of these because I don't want to mix um, too much like silicones with the epoxies to avoid contamination. What you see is the infusion resin, the laminating resin. I go through quite a lot of infusions, so laminating a bit less, so that's why there's only one. Then the easy lease is, in my opinion, the best release agent you can use, and the mold cleaner before using your molds. Then you can see the EG160. I've used this to make high temperature molds for pre prep and you could also see like in the previous few seconds that the pattern coat, the gloss coat is in a new bottle. So I extremely like this because I hate having those uh, tins where you pour some uh, resin out and then it sticks to the sides. And I think it's better in a bottle. Here you can see the different pigments. Um, they are specific for different types. So you have epoxy, polyurethane and polyester. Uh, and then you have the Pearl X. These are the two that I was missing. So I've already showed some examples with the Pearl X. I was missing the black and the white. And I think like the white is pretty cool because you can mix two colors and have some white streaks into your pores. So uh, when you're looking at river tables, sometimes you see like blue with a stripe of white into it, like um, a metallic flake. That's how it's possible to do. And then we have the catalysts of the CS, so the additive um, silicone and the condensation cure. Two different types. I'll go through that in a video that is ready and I'll be um, making uh, the video today. So uh, pretty soon it will be online after or before uploading this video. Then you have the laminating epoxy. So it's high temperature. I was just showing you the viscosity because it's not something you can infuse. But I was thinking about like a topic on this uh, channel about making like 
things not to do with um, resins or stuff and just try it out. So I'll be trying an infusion maybe with this uh, high temperature epoxy. Then you have the Unimold system. So it's my go-to system for um, making polyester molds. Keep in mind that if you're going for pre-break, you should better use the high temperature uh, resins. Then I have some rollers, really like these because they're hollow on the inside and then don't, they don't suck too much uh, resin in. Then there's a braided sleeve that I'll be using for tubes. So I have a tutorial about that in mine as well. And here are the scissors. So I go through quite a lot of scissors and my, like the biggest problem for me is that I'm left-handed. Uh, so it's very difficult to find the good pair of scissors. And I really like these. So. Um, I just uh, ordered a few of these just to be sure for next year. So then I have more connectors. Um, I'm making more and more pre prep parts as well and just try to batch them in one go just so they can go into the oven in one go. Uh, that's why I have more connectors. And then the permagrids, extremely good tools. So I use these on my Dremel um, and my um, Black & Decker jigsaw. These are more like the finishing end mills. I'll try to do something with this on the X-Carve as well, just to try to do some milling. I have a water bed now as well on the uh, X-Carve, and I'll be trying to carve into carbon fiber a bit more. And then you have just the plasticine and the uh, breeders and um, infusion meshes. So. Here's a good tip and I strongly advise everyone to do this is label all your products by date because sometimes you'll, you'll find a cup and you don't know how old it is. Uh, this way I make sure that I always know that I'm using them like probably better within one year but I've used some resins and even hardeners after three years and they still work but I should advise you just to do a small test sample to see if it's okay. So here we have the pre -prex. so I have... Um, like all the various pre pricks that you can get. These are all out of autoclave, so keep that in mind. I'm not using an autoclave, I'm just using the oven with vacuum. So here is the second box, and about that I'll go through more about the pre pricks later on in this video as well. So um, here is the big box with different rolls, so uh, mostly materials that I'll be using um, in the video. So uh, it will be fiberglass, carbon fiber, um, but I'll explain you a bit more why I order these and what my favorite uh, fabrics are. So here you can see the rolls of vacuum bagging material. And uh, in the next shot, you'll see a bit more in detail what these rolls are. So something you have to have is I think the biaxial. Uh, so it, this is a 300 grams and it's oriented in 45 degrees and 90, no, plus 45 and minus 45 uh, and that way when you're doing um, like a twill weave and you back this with this you get a uniform um, laminate so we have the vacuum bag so I have the red one and the green one now you could call the green one like the premium and the red one is a bit uh, less in quality uh, maybe it's, a, it's the wrong word, it's just another use. It's a bit cheaper as well, the red one. Uh, but I've seen in the pre prep tutorials that Easy Composite is using these. I'll just try it out because I know out of experience that it has more stretch than the green bagging film. So um, I'll see th about that and I'll just let you know what my findings are about that. So this is my favorite carbon fiber. So it's the 650. I've used it for uh, skinning parts and um, making various parts with infusion. So here we have the x -prex. So the thing I always do is I cut all the rolls directly when they come in, in more like um, easy to handle packages. So I just go um, through the width of the uh, pre prick rolls and I just cut them, in, cut them in length. So it's one meter 25 on 50. So I had two meters of each and I did um, 50, 50, 50, and then two times 25. Just when I have smaller parts, I can just get that roll out of the freezer and use it directly. So I have the um, surface finish pre prick Then I have the backing pre prick I also have the mold making pre pricks So that will be included in a video pretty soon as well, just to compare it with the tooling gel coat, so the high temperature tooling and the um, 
backing laminated laminating epoxy till 160 degrees so this is a freezer i store everything in the freezer if you do this you can store them up to one one year if you don't do it it's about one month of shelf life um, when you just leave them at room temperature so i make sure that i put everything as fast as possible into the um, the freezer just to uh, have like a longer um, shelf life of these materials so everything is getting into the freezer like you can see the small rolls are 25 centimeters on one meter 25 and that's mostly enough for the parts that i make make so i'm not making spacecraft and uh, <laughs> big boats so this is just good for me and um, everything is stored and i can just use him whenever i want so uh, <laughs> no gopros were harmed into making this video um, so it was just a cool shot i think so it's an extra for this year to having a gopro so thanks for watching and i hope to see you in the next video